me and you. That's great. I am so happy to see you all. Uh, well, technically I cannot see you, but I hope that you are watching this video. And today I'm here with Act 2, Scene 1 of Tempest. Now, if you want me to go on with this explanation of Tempest scene by scene, do comment below, let me know, watch the videos, like the video, share the videos and show your support. So, let's begin with Act 2, Scene 1. Now, this scene begins, scene begins with all the ship's passengers gathered on the stage. The mention of the stage is due to the play element of the Tempest. Now, Tempest is a play written by Shakespeare and that's why it is bound to have a stage, exits and entries, right? So, we see that every passenger is on the stage except Ferdinand because we know that Ferdinand is somewhere else. He is happy and he is with Miranda. Yes. And uh, now we see that from the people present on one is Gonzalo. Now Gonzalo is feeling positive. He is cheerful. He is thankful that they have survived a storm. They have survived the tempest and he is happy to be alive. Whereas we see Alonso the king, he is really sad because he feels his only son Ferdinand has drowned in the sea. And we also see Antonio who is the brother of Prospero, Sebastian who is the brother of Alonso. Both of them not feeling sad, not feeling happy, are just there to spoil everyone's mood. So they even blame Alonso for what has happened to Ferdinand. They say that if he would have not married his daughter Claribel to the African prince, they would not be returning. And Ferdinand would still be alive. Now give the trophy to Antonio and Sebastian for the winners of the blind game. Now everyone is feeling sad and suddenly Ariel swoops in. Now Ariel is the air spirit that we have met in scene 2 of act 1 and he can only be seen by the audience that's us and by Prospero whom he serves. So he swoops in unseen by the passengers present on the stage and with his magic he puts everyone to sleep except Antonio and Sebastian. Now what will two evil people left alone do? They will plot and conspire and that's exactly what both of them do. Now Antonio and Sebastian devise a plan to seize the throne and to seize the crown of the king Alonso. Now Sebastian has a certain conscience but Antonio's evilness is more powerful and he manipulates Sebastian into giving in the plan of overthrowing the king. So both of them draw their swords in order to murder the king so they can seize the throne. Everyone is ambitious in the story. Now when they draw the sword, suddenly with a click, everybody wakes up. And that's Ariel's doing. Now everyone wakes up and they see that Antonio and Sebastian are holding swords. So everyone is confused. Why are they holding swords? So they suddenly make up a story that they were holding swords because they heard some noise and they were trying to defend themselves. And... Alonso being the naive, grief-stricken king, he believes his brother and all of the passengers, King Gonzalo, both Antonio and Sebastian and all the other people, they go in search of Ferdinand, having a hope that the noise might be coming from somewhere that can make them reach Ferdinand. In this scene, we also see different sides of Alonso. One side being him as an unconcerned king who did not help Prospero and who turned a blind eye to the deceit of Antonio. And we also see on the other side the concerned father who is worried about the well-being of his only son. And we, in the second thing about the scene we see Gonzalo's dream of the utopian society. We see the ambitious side, the dreamer side of 
Gonzalo where he dreams if he would be the king he would not have commerce no law no servants no need to grow food no need to work everything that the man needs would be provided by nature now the basic problem about this utopian society is that the utopian society fails to take into consideration the human values the human behaviors human behavior cannot be generalized human behavior cannot be predicted it changes and that is why the utopian society mentioned by gonzalo would never work now we see here the ambitious side of gonzalo that he also would like to be the king and he would uh, correct all the flaws that are that he sees in the present king but the difference between the ambition of gonzalo and the ambitions of antonio and sebastian is that gonzalo would never harm his own king to achieve his ambitions whereas sebastian and antonio are ready to go to any extent to achieve what they want and that's what makes gonzalo different from them now we also see that gonzalo has a positive side to see things like he first of all cheers for the safety and he is hopeful that they will find ferdinand he's continuously comforting alonso that ferdinand is alive and they'll soon find him gonzalo also observes that despite being through the tempest and uh, through the all the storm the sea water their clothing are not harmed and not damaged in any way by the salt water they are perfectly fine that's gonzalo's positive thinking and that's the blend of reality and illusion in the story and here we see that prospero although not present in the scene is continuously watching from behind the scenes manipulating and functioning as a godlike entity who knows all who decides all and who knows what to do with whom with this we end the scene and if you would like me to continue with the scene 2 of act 2 kindly comment below and let me know what you think so see you next time bye